Hi, I'm Chris. You might remember me from my instructional video on how to use the Japanese train system, JR system. A uh, very popular video. I think we're up to about 40 views now. But uh, we're back here in the United States, here in West Virginia, and I'm going to show you another one of my hobbies here. Uh, this is my beloved 1982 Lincoln Continental Mark VI, which uses the Ford EEC3 electronic en engine controls which are very controversial because some people really hate them because the EEC3 system does not give you a diagnostic test connector where you can read the codes very easily as you can on the later EEC4, 5, and 6 systems. But there is a way to get the codes out of the car and if you look on the internet you'll find the instructions for how to do it but it's, it's a little bit tricky, it's a little bit complicated because there's some conflicting information out there. Well I've got this set up uh, because I wanted to read the codes because I've got a little drivability problem here. I've got a little bit of hesitation and rough idle and I'm not sure where it's coming from. So I'm going to pull the codes on this car from an EEC3 system and I figured while we had the whole thing set up we'd show you how to do it. So uh, in the next scene we'll show you the diagnostic setup. Here we have the engine compartment of said Lincoln. Now you will see that I have hooked up an oscilloscope. Yes, that's right quite a fancy piece of test equipment, you don't have to use it. You can simply use a test light. An incandescent light, a 12 volt to 14 volt indicator light will work, but I find it easier to look at the pulses on the oscilloscope. So that's why I've gone through the trouble of setting up the oscilloscope over here. Now, in order to run the self-test, you have to connect a vacuum hose to the atmosphere side, let me turn the camera around here so it's right side up, this is the BMAP sensor, uh, barometric manifold absolute pressure sensor of the car. This hose down here, this fitting, is usually open to atmosphere. You have to hook up a vacuum pump to this line. You do not touch this line, which goes, the other one, which goes to the uh, intake manifold and measures manifold vacuum. You only want it on the atmosphere side, okay? So I have hooked up a hand vacuum pump to the atmosphere side of the BMAP sensor. That's part one. Part two, you have to connect a wire to the green side, there are two green wires here, of this solenoid. I forget if this is a thermactor, atmosphere, or, or which one this is, but this is the one that most manuals will say to use, the, the one on the right as you're facing it. Now, Notice that is on the passenger side of the car. There's another set of solenoids over there. You don't want those. You want the ones on the passenger side and use the one on the right because I know it'll work. Now there is, again, some controversy that when the Ford Rotunda system came out, they called for two test lights, one here and one on the other solenoid, but it appears that simply using the one on the right will work. So I've just taken a piece of wire and I've shoved it down into the connector to make an electrical contact. Then I have a clip lead which then goes to the input of the oscilloscope, which is down here and then goes over there. The other side of the input goes to the positive battery terminal, not the negative. You might think that these solenoids have a positive going output, but they don't. The way this system works, you connect the other side of your test light, or in my case the oscilloscope, to the positive terminal not the negative. Now in my case I have hooked a wire down here onto the starter solenoid connections uh, just because it's easier than using the actual battery post. So I have the oscilloscope set up to trace here and I've already uh, experimented with this. When the codes start the trace will rise up here and then it will drop indicating the pulses. Now it's very tricky when you do this because you have to be paying attention as soon as you let go of the vacuum to start reading your pulses. Some of the online manuals will say that there is an initial code pulse that doesn't say anything. I haven't found that. If you simply get pulse one and then a space and then a second one, of course, that means that there are no problems. But as you'll see, this car is reading two codes in succession and what it will do is read out the two codes, each of which consists of two numbers, and then it will repeat them, then the test is over. So what we're going to do is we're going to start the car, 
and I'm going to pump up the vacuum to over 20 inches of uh, vacuum over here. Hold it for 10 seconds approximately, let go, then start to watch the codes. So I'm going to give the camera back to my wife, we're going to start the car, and we'll show you how it works. Okay, uh, the engine's pretty noisy, but I think I'll be heard over the din. So I have the vacuum gauge here, and we're going to pump up the vacuum to about between 20 and 25 uh, inches of uh, mercury, I guess that is. And we're going to hold it for approximately 10 seconds, and then let it go. When you release the vacuum, that's when the self-test starts, and that's when we have to start watching the oscilloscope. Okay, so here we go. Now as I pump this up, the idle speed will increase, and that is correct. That's what it's supposed to do. So here we go. Okay, and we're going to hold this now for about 10 seconds. My connection isn't perfect, so it leaks down a little bit, so I keep pumping it. One. That was the initial pulse to save the test start. One, two. Okay, so that was code 12. That was a one and then two pulses. Here comes another one. It takes a while for the codes to read out. But this is at the zero point, so the pulses are going to go down from here. As you can see, it does. It, it takes its own sweet time. One. One, two. Code 12. That was a one followed by, okay, one, two. One, two, three. That was a code 23. So we have code 12 and code 23. One, two. That was a code 12. There it is. That is the ECM reading out its codes. So that was a clear-cut case of a code 12, code 23, and then code 12 read out again. Why it doesn't read both codes out all the way through, I don't know. But when you hear the idle return to normal after the self-test, the test is over. The throttle kicker continues to be active for some time after the test. Again, there is some conflicting information on this, but generally about one minute after the test is finished, it will go back to normal and that's it.